Bobby Axelrod wants to be a bank. Axelrod is becoming obsessed with being a bank. We would like you to stall the approval. Chuck Rhodes won't let him, of course. And then deny it. Based on a Wall Street Journal article, it looks like hedge funds often dream of that, but it doesn't materialize in the real world. But that won't stop Axelrod from trying or me from doing an analysis. What I want to know is, is it really a good idea? There's been some really clever comments saying that it's a private equity play. In that case, the bank would be a part of the portfolio. The goal would be to restructure it and sell it back at a profit. An excellent idea, but I don't think that's the intent here. Axelrod wants to operate a bank while still being a hedge fund manager. We know he wants a community bank, ideally in his hometown of Yonkers. In the beginning, he's applying for a bank charter. Stole the approval and then deny it. Quickly, he realizes it's easier to buy one. And there's a scene where he tries to buy Marcus from the actual CEO of Goldman Sachs. There are over 4,000 community banks in the US. Many are listed. So if you're a billionaire, you should be able to snap one. So we're looking at some kind of merger between Axe Capital, the hedge fund, and a community bank. It's a bit unusual. Banks are, of course, very regulated. And I don't think they'd be able to have a hedge fund with a bank on top. The bank would have to remain a bank. There would be two entities in the group. So let's jump ahead and assume that Axe has won and he's bought himself a bank. So I picked a community bank in the US, first source bank. It's the first one alphabetically. It's listed, so we have a price tag for it. Its market capitalization is just over 1 billion. Maybe we could buy it for a premium of around 20%. So 1.3 billion. Let's just rename it Source Bank because we're going to use it as a source for boosting the hedge fund in many different ways. So Axelrod's a banker now. Banks being safe was the main thing for Axelrod. He wants an easier life where he can relax and have dinner with his family, for example. A different world. Where the government doesn't hunt you down, but instead gives you a nice soft nap to land. Now that the Axe Group owns a bank, does he have government protection? Then he should really maximize the risk. If it works, great. If not, he gets bailed out. Then it's like nothing happened. Back to the hedge fund life. Wag seems to like the idea. I want to become a bank in order to rob it. Let's say, for example, the bank has lent too much to hedge funds. It collapses. The government intervenes. The deposits are insured, but in practice, what they do is bring in some other bank to take over the deposit and they would wipe out the equity. And really, the hedge fund would be in the eye of the regulator because it's not just Chuck, it's the SEC that would step in. And we know that would mean a lot of trouble. There's really no way that owning a bank could provide a safety net for Axe Group. His dream is really based on misunderstanding of banking regulations. But let's look at the upside. We're assuming the hedge fund can buy the bank, but the bank would still have to comply with the rules. And when it comes to banks, there are a lot of rules and regulations. Banks, of course, have a lot of customers that are somehow captive. They have deposits and loans, but the bank can sell other products too. So could Axe Capital sell stuff to them? No, at least not straight away. There's the Dodd-Frank Act and Reg D. They prevent selling complex financial products to normal people unless they are accredited investors. However, I think Axe Cap could create and package strategies as funds or ETFs. Those wrappers would allow them to be shipped through the bank and to a greater public of non-accredited investors. Their precedents, Mann Group and Marshall Weiss are two famous hedge fund managers that took this route. Marshall Weiss's ETF was launched in 2010 and is still alive today, but it only has about 200 million in assets. And the Mann GLG ETF was liquidated after a few years. It doesn't look like a massive opportunity. Now, wouldn't it be nice if the bank could invest its balance sheet directly in the funds managed by Axe Capital? A bank's balance sheet is different from that of a regular company. And there's a part for investments or trading assets because banks can invest their deposits. The investments are generally very conservative, but could we invest in a risky hedge fund? There is the Volcker rule, which followed the Dodd-Frank Act. It prevents banks from getting involved with any hedge fund stuff or risky investment. 
or I should say it prevented. There's good news for X Capital here. In June 2020, it was amended by the Trump administration. Now, a community bank can invest in hedge funds as long as it has less than $10 billion in assets. So Source Bank or First Source has $7.5 billion in assets, so they can invest in X Capital. Based on the same legislation, it can only be 5% of the total assets, so $375 million. These are funds that he will fully control. So unlike other clients that can leave, they're here to stay. So it's looking quite good for Axe. Now, let's see if the bank could lend cheaply to the hedge fund. The banking rules have been set at the Basel Accord, and there's a series of them. One critical aspect is the capital adequacy ratio. The limit is defined as a percentage of the core capital. So under Basel 3, it is 8%. Source bank risk-weighted assets are at about $6 billion, and its tier one capital ratio is at 15.3. Its tier one capital is 915 million. And I've calculated that it can have a total of 10.5 billion in risk weighted assets. So 4.5 more. Now the risk weighting for lending to a hedge fund would be 150%. So the bank can lend 3 billion. I couldn't find a rule about the debt limit, but there are a few things to consider, such as reserve requirement, but they've been set to zero in the US since March 2020, so problem solved. There's also the leverage ratio, but it looks less constraining than the tier one capital ratio. So let's proceed. And this, I initially thought we would have to borrow more money in order to lend to the hedge fund, but then I discovered the magic of banking. So when a bank makes a loan, there are two corresponding entries on its balance sheet, one on the asset side and one on the liability side. But what's amazing is that the loan on the asset side is offset by a newly created deposit, not a debt. So loans really create deposits and banks create money. There are more interesting ratios in the Basel Accord and there are a lot of rules. So I might be missing something, but it looks like we can proceed. So actually what that would just bring us above the 10 billion threshold for being able to invest directly in the hedge fund. So what I'm gonna do is just add 2.4 billion. So the assets are now 9.9 billion. I can invest 5% in the hedge funds through the trading assets and I'm going to lend the rest. So 1.9 billion to the hedge fund at zero cost. That actually covers the cost of buying the bank. So this is how it looks for Axe the banker and Axe the hedge fund manager. And the banker has investments in a hedge fund that could perform well. So what's not to like? Because I'm not too confident in all the rules, I'd say it's 50% doable and an impact that's clearly positive. So where does that leave us? I have a confession to make. I thought that the bank thing in billions was completely bogus at first. Like a MacGuffin in the Hitchcock movie, something that's important for the character, drives the plot, but the story is really about something else. Now, based on this analysis, there is some upside in owning a bank. But Axe's dream of being protected is not going to happen. So that brings me to the next question. Could there be a better option for a hedge fund with a few billion to invest? I think the answer is yes. And we'll find out in the next episode where we're getting some tips from this guy. So what do you think? Did I miss out on any regulation? Or is there any loophole that would allow Axe to really benefit from the bank even more? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, subscribe to catch the next episodes and show your support. Thank you.